I have been dying to share a deeply personal story with you. I was diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 47. And I wanted to talk to you about it because I'm not the only person who's been diagnosed late in life with ADHD. In fact, researchers say this is very common with women. And there's an entire generation of women, they've labeled them the lost generation, who have struggled with ADHD their entire lives and never even knew it. And I was one of them. And you may be one of them too. And when I was finally diagnosed, this was just six years ago, and I'm going to tell you the whole story about how I got diagnosed because it was by mistake. But when I finally got that diagnosis, it was both a blessing and a curse. It was a blessing because I finally understood all the things that I had struggled with for my entire life. And here's why it was a curse. It was a curse because once I understood the impact of living with undiagnosed ADHD on women in particular, I couldn't help but reflect back on the past 47 years where I was living my life. I had ADHD. I wasn't treated for it. I didn't know it. I felt so much grief about the amount of struggles that I had. And I wondered, things could have been really different. If somebody had figured this out when I was really little, if I had gotten the interventions that really helped someone like me, I know I wouldn't have struggled with anxiety or did some of the things I deeply regret for more than 30 years. That's how big of a deal this has been in my life. And so today, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. You're going to learn the four key differences about how ADHD affects boys and girls, and you're going to understand the reason why women go profoundly undiagnosed. You'll learn the surprising way most women find out that they have ADHD, and you're also going to hear about the connection between anxiety, depression, eating disorders, and living with undiagnosed ADHD. And you will get a lot of good news because there is good news. And there's a lot that you can do to support yourself if you or someone you love have ADHD. And I'm going to focus on the impact on women, but you might not be a woman. I mean, we're in 194 countries at this point with the Mel Robbins podcast. We have fans across the entire gender spectrum. But I want you to listen, and here's why. You know women and girls in your life. And when you hear what I'm about to explain to you, this will help you understand and empower your sister, your partner, your daughter, your girlfriend, your niece, anybody that you know, because this conversation today is going to be full of resources that will help you empower yourself or other people in your life who have either been diagnosed or who haven't been diagnosed and are wondering, what the hell is wrong with me? Because that's basically how I felt for the first 47 years of my life. What the fuck is wrong with me? This is something that happened to me six years ago, and it changed the trajectory of my life. It's a story about our son, Oakley. He was in the fourth grade, and I was 47 years old, and he was really struggling in school. And we went through the uh, testing that so many of us go through with our kids whenever they're struggling in school to find out, you know, what are we dealing with? What is the casserole of the brain that is Oakley Robbins. And the school is trying to tell us that he was having all kinds of behavioral issues. He was interrupting class. He was fidgety. He didn't pay attention, blah, 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 blah. But we knew something was up. And luckily, this was at a time in our life where we could afford to go outside the school and get a neuropsych exam. Huge shout out to Dr. Moldover, the GOAT in Wellesley, Massachusetts. And sure enough, he did a neuropsych on our son, Oakley. And the findings were very conclusive. He had profound dyslexia. He had dysgraphia, which is uh, kind of related to dyslexia. These are both language-based learning styles based on your neural pathway development in the brain. And the other thing he was diagnosed with is ADHD. And when I started reading the report, because when you get these uh, assessments done, and I'm sure a ton of you have had this experience either with your kids or maybe it happened to you when you were a kid or with uh, nieces or nephews, it's super common for people to go through this. When we got the big report kind of telling us all about Oakley's brain, I was sitting with his pediatrician 
Dr. Blumenthal. And I'd known Mark for, my God, 16 years at this point. And we're flipping through the thing and Mark's going, yeah, 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 this makes a lot of sense, makes a lot of sense, you know, and we were going to talk options about what we could do in terms of therapy or medication or, you know, ways that we could support Oak now that we had a diagnosis about both his learning style, but more importantly, about this attention issue. And I kind of looked at Mark and I said, you know, as I'm reading this, Mark, this sounds a lot like me. Do, do you think that maybe I have ADHD? And Dr. Blumenthal, I just love this guy. He leans back in his chair and he looks at me with this sort of stunned look on his face. And he's like, do I think you have ADHD? Mel Robbins, of course you have ADHD. In fact, you're probably the most ADHD parent I have in my entire practice. You are so successful and you are a complete bird brain. Do you realize that you will go years and not bring your kids in for their wellness appointments? In fact, every fall, we have a joke. We know that you are going to be one of those 20 parents that call in a fucking panic because you need a, 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 you need a physical. You need a physical. Your kids practice starts tomorrow. You need a physical. And now you're, it's a five alarm fire but you've missed their wellness appointment and you do it every year and you'll leave every exam and you'll go, Oh yeah. Okay. I'll follow up. I'll call you tomorrow. I'll tell you about it. You never do. And I just looked at him and I said, and, and, and as he was talking, cause I knew he was right. I always felt so incompetent about my ability to keep up with appointments or to remember things like that or any of it. And then he goes, so do I think you have ADHD? Of course you have ADHD. And I looked him square in the eye, you guys, and you know what I said to him? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me I had ADHD? And he goes, I'm not your doctor, Mel. I'll tell you, I was 47 years old when I realized that what I had been dealing with for my entire life may not be anxiety. It might just be fucking ADHD. And so I went to my uh, primary care she referred me to a specialist, sure enough, just like my son, dyslexia, ADHD. And I have since learned because, you know, once something happens in my life, I am like a truffle pig rooting for a truffle. I literally start digging until I find something. And I made it my mission six years ago to find out everything I could possibly discover about ADHD. Not only because I wanted to help our son Oakley and eventually our daughter Kendall and our daughter Sawyer, but also because now that I understood that I had this diagnosis, I wanted to understand what the hell was going on so I could help myself. And what I learned is incredible. I am part of a lost generation of women who were diagnosed with anxiety or depression or an eating disorder or some other condition in my teens and 20s, when the underlying problem all along was that they missed the diagnosis of ADHD. And that's why I want to talk to you about it. I have wanted to have a conversation with you about this ever since we started this podcast eight months ago, but I have been reluctant to do it because I wanted to make sure I had resources to give you. Because every time I've talked about this on YouTube or on social or I've talked about it on a talk show, we receive an avalanche of inbound stories, requests for information. And so I didn't want to unpack everything I'm going to share with you today until I knew I could point you in the right direction. And what we're going to talk about today is really important. It's really important because what the research shows is that when you are not properly diagnosed with ADHD and you have it, the outcomes for girls in particular are horrendous. And the word horrendous is a word that one of the world's leading experts uses, not me. Let me just read this to you. This comes from Dr. Ellen Littman, who's a clinical psychologist, co-author of Understanding Girls with ADHD. And this is what she said. Anxiety and depression turn into low self-esteem, self-loathing, and the risk for self-harm and suicide attempts is four times higher for girls with ADHD than girls without. That's terrifying. So the conversation that we're going to have today, it, it goes way beyond having trouble with homework or having trouble focusing. We will we'll cover all of this. But I personally believe as I sit here and I look back on my life, I'm now 53 years old. I was diagnosed with ADHD late. 
at the age of 47, six years ago. I look back on my life and I know that I would not have struggled with anxiety the way that I did had I been properly diagnosed, medicated, and treated for ADHD when I was little. Full stop. And so if you're somebody that has struggled with low self-esteem, self-loathing, anxiety, depression, eating disorders, you got diagnosed in your teens and your 20s, and you can't seem to turn the corner on this, I truly want you to consider what I'm about to share with you, what I've learned in the last six years of researching this extensively, talking to the world's leading experts about this, among them Dr. Ned Hollowell, who wrote Driven to Distraction. He's like the OG of uh, ADD research. He's uh, at Harvard. He's a world-renowned psychologist, Dr. Daniel Amen, who has scanned my brain uh, and taught me all kinds of stuff about what he sees when he does a brain scan of somebody with ADHD. This is not about organization. ADHD, the, the definition of ADHD, and this was new to me, ADHD is a chronic neurobiological disorder which affects the brain's structural and chemical capabilities. It impacts the various parts of the brain and the way that your brain communicates with one another. And it is also highly inheritable. And there is good news here. There's a lot of good news that you're going to learn, but here's what I, we're going to cover, okay? Because this is not just like, hey, let's get some Adderall and party longer. This is a very serious issue, particularly for women, because we are profoundly underdiagnosed. So today, what I'm going to share with you is the six surprising signs that I didn't know, that I had all six of them, that could be signs that you too have adult ADHD. We're going to talk about why women were so profoundly underdiagnosed and have been profoundly underdiagnosed for decades. We're going to talk about the mental health implication when you're not properly diagnosed and when you don't seek either therapeutic or occupational or some sort of medic medicine treatment for it. You're going to learn about the four key differences between how ADHD presents in boys and girls. And we're going to talk about what to do if you think this is you. And finally, we're going to get into what's actually happening in your brain when you have ADHD, because this is so fascinating. I'm going to use a very physical metaphor for you that will have you completely understand this and why this is such a huge issue. And maybe the first place to start is why are so many women underdiagnosed? Why does this go missing in girls? Well, the answer is this. When they first made ADHD a diagnosis back in the late 70s, they only studied boys. <laughs> That's it. They only studied boys. And boys present very differently than girls. They have totally different symptoms typically. And this is really important to understand because when I first heard the term ADHD, I thought of our son. Our son is like the poster boy for ADHD symptoms. Leg is jittery, hands are fidgeting, you know, raising the hand, bumping up and down, got to run to the bathroom, bopping around, do to do to do, highly distracted. But what always confused me about him is that he could also laser focus on video games. So I sort of dismissed ADHD because I'm like, well, he can focus on video games, so it must be about his interest in things. No, 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 no. ADHD has both physical symptoms that you see on the surface, and those are typically what's present in boys. But the reason why girls went profoundly misdiagnosed is because girls typically do not present those physical, jittery, interrupting kind of physical chaos. And boys present four key differences with ADHD than girls do. Here they are. Number one, when a boy has ADHD, they have symptoms that appear on the surface, impulsive behavior, fidgeting, getting distracted, being very physical with their inability to concentrate. Girls, uh, we have the opposite symptoms. Ours are all internal. We're restless, we daydream, we're hard on ourselves, we're forgetful, we're disorganized, and we start to aim it at ourselves as a character flaw. So when you're a girl with ADHD, you daydream, you're disorganized, you're hard on yourself, you make careless mistakes, you might be called a tomboy or super creative. But what happens, and this is why this is so scary and this is what happened to me, is that when you sit in life or in a classroom and you see all your friends turning things in on time or staying organized or their lockers are clean and 
yours is a mess and you're running late and you start to think you have a character defect. You start to think there's something wrong with you. So you turn it back on yourself. And so that's what happened to me. And it also gets missed because it's internal. We're not sitting there bouncing our leg and jumping and raising our hand. We have the opposite impact. The second key difference between boys and girls is that boys present earlier, typically around the age of seven. Girls, however, present later. On average, like around 12. The third reason why uh, there's a big difference between girls and boys is because boys wear it on their sleeve. They're very physical. They're fidgety. They're frustrated by it. They have trouble controlling their physical outbursts. Whereas girls, girls are excellent at hiding this. Why? Well, because we feel the pressure to conform. We feel like something's wrong with us. We do our best to cope. We do our best to like look around and see what everybody else is doing. And we start working harder to compensate for what we feel is a character default in us that we are lesser than, that we're not good enough, that everybody else seems to get this but me, and we hide it. And here's the big fucking difference between girls and boys with ADHD. Boys tend to get better. Girls get worse. And that is exactly what happened to me. I got way worse. Way worse. What goes from daydreaming, following instructions, making careless mistakes, forgetfulness, all-nighters, not being able to stay organized, that chronic struggle turns into, I'm fucked up, there's something wrong with me, and a profound correlation between anxiety, depression, eating disorders, suicidal thoughts. This is not just me, by the way. Let me pull some of the research out because this shit is scary. You can hear me flipping through my papers. I, I, I prepared for this because I wanted you to have uh, women with ADHD face the feelings of being overwhelmed and exhausted the same way that men do. However, women increasingly have psychological distress, feel inadequate, low self-esteem, chronic stress. This is extremely common. You feel that your life is out of control or chaos and daily tasks start to seem impossibly huge. Research shows that ADHD materializes dramatically differently in girls. And one clinical psychologist, Dr. Ellen Lippman, this should scare you, says she wrote the book Understanding Girls with ADHD. The outcomes for girls are horrendously negative compared to boys because ADHD materializes dramatically differently in girls as they get older. Anxiety and depression turn into low self-esteem and self-loathing. That happened to me. And the risk for self-harm and suicide attempts, four to five times greater for girls with ADHD. This is not about having trouble with homework. This is not about remembering birthdays. Because unlike boys, many of whom just show hyperactivity, girls' symptoms veer inward. And that means we aim all this at ourselves. And that's where the anxiety comes in. That's where the depression comes in. That's where the eating disorders come in. That's where the self-harm come in is because you actually believe something's wrong with you. And here's what I'm here to say. There's nothing wrong with you. Absolutely nothing wrong with you. In fact, ADHD has a high correlation to being a successful entrepreneur, to being highly creative, to being a problem solver, a risk taker. There is so much beauty in this. But you also need to understand if you're dealing with a neurobiological disorder, which impacts your prefrontal cortex. Most girls that have undiagnosed ADHD, you know what they start to have on the surface? Anxiety. Because of course, if you're going to go into school every day and you're disorganized and you make careless mistakes and you're hard on yourself and you start to tell yourself there's something wrong with you, of course you're going to feel anxious about going. And it makes perfect sense, right? And if you can't control your ability to pay attention to things, a lot of us start seeking other things we can control. And that's why there are so many co-diagnoses with ADHD and eating disorders and anxiety and depression with girls. And that's exactly what happened to me. In fact, I was treated for decades for anxiety, and I am sitting here telling you right now, I 100% believe 
The issue I had all along was very simple. I had dyslexia and ADHD and nobody fucking knew it. And instead, I developed anxiety. Why? Because that's what happens when you have undiagnosed ADHD and dyslexia and you don't understand why your brain doesn't work the same way as everybody else. You don't understand why you're always late, why you can't get it together, why things are always a mess, why there's clutter around you, why you're constantly missing deadlines or doctor's appointments or leaving your Kleenex on the counter or you can't forget that. I, like it's relentless. And so of course anxiety would develop. And I'm on a mission today to share absolutely everything that I have learned in my own deeply personal research to be a better mother of kids with ADHD and to be a better partner to myself as I live my life as an adult with ADHD. And what I've learned is life-changing. There are things that you can do. There are very surprising signs that this may be something for you. And I need to say right up front, I'm not a doctor. The purpose of this episode is not meant to diagnose you at all. I am here to entertain you with my story. And I am here to educate you based on my personal experience. And I am here to empower you to know that this is a reality for so many women in particular in the world so that if it rings true for you, you go seek the professional help that's out there to get a very clear answer of what's happening for you. That's what this is about because that's how you create a better life. I want to tell you a deeply personal story. This is something that happened to me six years ago and it change the trajectory of my life. This is a very serious issue, particularly for women because we are profoundly underdiagnosed. So today what I'm going to share with you is the six surprising signs that I didn't know that I had all six of them that could be signs that you too have adult ADHD. 